This is another cast brought to you by StarCast TV. And today we've got a Zerg versus Protoss. Again, we've got my favorite Protoss player. It is Snow in the top right, and meanwhile in the bottom left. This man right here, he needs no introduction because it is the legend himself. It is Jadong. I am a huge fan of Jadong. In fact, he is my number one Zerg of all time. What I like about him is, of course, the stellar macro that he has in Zerg vs. Protoss. Of course, the immaculate Muta control in Zerg vs. Zerg. But what I like the most is that he's got that killer instinct, man. He is not opposed to going for a mega all-in when he knows that even there is the slightest of holes in your defense. So this is definitely going to be a banger. But what I like about Snow is he's got very sick unit control. He's well known for the Reaver. And on a map like Odyssey, where we have those temples, let me see if I can bring up the map real quick, where we have these temples right here, for example. You know, he loves the Reavers. And back in the olden days, when we played on maps like Medusa, a lot of players would bust these temples with Reavers, with Fire Bats. So I'm hoping that we do actually have a Reaver opening from him, knock down these temples, open up that third base, and potentially have a, a, a big bust there. Meanwhile, we have that probe coming in for the scout, and he is going to see that this was an overpool from Jadong. And we just have the typical gateway expand from Snow. There's the first Zealot. This is quite a big hole right here. We know that this is going to get uh, closed up with a forge. So because this is a decently sized hole, I, I'm assuming he's going to build at least two Zealots before the Nexus comes down. We've got our hatchery coming in at the natural, everything very standard. And I assume that probably one of these drones is going to sneak back into this bottom base, take a third hatch. And that will give Jadong easy three bases to defend, easy three gas. But you know, this is Odyssey. Oh, wait a minute. Looks like this is an older version of Odyssey. You know, after I said there's gonna give him three gas, I remember that Odyssey has double gas in the bases, but this time around, on this version, there is no double gas in the main. So I would already favor Zerg a little bit just because of this minor change to the map. And we actually see Jadong taking mid left as opposed to this back base. Uh, you know, I've seen a lot of Zerg versus Protoss on this map, and almost every time I've seen Protoss get onto the high ground there, up here for example, uh, they've had a really easy time busting the third base. So I think that this is going to be quite difficult for Jadon to defend. We'll see what he comes up with though. I love the Zealot probe defense to push back these two lings, make that six lings. We do have a slight move out from Snow here. Just two Zealots, though. He's in the darkness, so that means that Zerg has to respond, and you can see he is responding with more Lings. And this, I think, could be a boss, but nope. Back in the main, it is going to be a drone and Overlord. I saw him building, you know, four more additional Lings, and I thought to myself, you know, ten, ten Lings? That seems like an excessive amount for just two Zealots. But that's what he's going to go with. And he is going to start transitioning back into the macro. Meanwhile, back in Snow's main cybernetics, about halfway done. So everything looks pretty normal. Now, because there is no additional gas in the main, like I pointed out, I think the likelihood of it being Corsair Reaver is quite low. You know, the Reaver is going to cost a lot of gas. The Corsair is going to cost a lot of gas. And because of that, I think we're just going to probably see standard Citadel follow up. This probe's still out on the map, still scouting around, but not too sure how much actual intel he's gotten. In Jadong main, he has a Hydra deck. So we are going to have a three hatch bust, and I guess that's why he built so many lanes. Not only did he want to deal with those two zealots, he also wanted to make sure that the probe has no chance of getting in. And there is the Stargate for Snow. It is halfway done. 
he really needs to figure out what this is ASAP. And that probe did skirt by for a moment, and I thought, wow, maybe he'll get in. But speed kicks in. He is going to be denied. And everything looks pretty normal, I would say, from Protoss' perspective. And he is responding as if it is, you know, everything's being normal. But he really needs to get additional cannons. He only has one right now. Speed is about to kick in for Zerg. No Hydras just yet. Okay, there we go. There's the first two. First four. First six. So for now, it looks like that this could be a real bust. We see double Overlord production here. Eight Hydralis, in fact. And now it, the real question is, is how hard does Jadon commit? you got to remember that this is a two-player map. Rush distances aren't exactly the longest. I think he could com commit really hard here. Try and bust this down. He's definitely going to get the forge, that's for sure. So this plus one weapon is going to be denied. This is a lot of zealots, though. This is quite a few zealots. But in the main of snow, his citadel is so late. There's no chance of him having speed to push this back. And that is a dead forge, 100%. He's even going to lose one zealot, almost for free. Snow might actually just outright die to these hydras. Nope, it looks like the lings fall, and that means that not really going to be able to pounce on these cannons but he does at least force out a lot of defense from snow and look at this it is actually a decent committal to the hydras this is about 12 hydras wow he's actually still committing to hydras this is not necessarily all in but a very big commitment here jadong definitely has to get more damage than simply cutting off the forge and killing the gateway he's got a I don't know, at least kill more zealots here, force more cannons in some sense. I don't even think that this amount of cannons is an overcommitment from Snow. I think six is pretty much perfect. We do see the fourth hatch coming down. We do see drones starting to be built and lairs starting to be built, but I don't think that that was the damage that Jadon was really looking for. You can see his drone count still really struggling at just 24. Protoss is at a really healthy probe count. It is at 42. This is kind of the amount that you don't even need probes anymore. Probably Snow's going to stop producing probes after this cycle. Maybe just one more, in fact. And then just really flood those gates. And that's exactly what we're seeing. We do see four gates coming in. Speed has started. Templar Archive. I didn't see it in the main. Didn't see it in the natural. So no Templar Archive yet. And I was talking about these temples earlier. Uh, he is going to knock this down. I can't remember, are these stacked? Since this version doesn't have the gas in the main, I'm thinking that this might not be stacked. We'll see though, the shadow is quite large, but look how fast these just eight hydras take down 5,000 hit points on this building. Okay, they are stacked. I, I had a feeling that they were stacked, but uh, he's gonna keep continuing to knock those down. We do have seven zealots out on the map, and that's... Okay, I thought that was an additional gate, and I was going to say that's a lot of gateways. But it is just six for now. I think this is manageable for Jadong. We've got the Spire coming down. Corsair spot it. So everything looks pretty manageable for Snow, in fact. I think I like his position more. He's at 50 probes. That's a really big econ for him. Because he's got so many probes, he may, in fact, go up to, like, eight gates, nine gates on two bases. And there we go, we've got the 12 Zealot move out. Now remember, plus one was denied, so these Zealots are not going to be as impactful as they could have been. Sixth hatch coming up for Jadong, Sunken coming up at the third base. Good Sim City here. I'd like to see some type of plug up right here with either an evolution chamber or even just another Sunken Colony to make sure Zealots can't get in from this angle. But other than that, I don't really see an angle of attack here. For snow repositioning the hydras down to the bottom side hydras coming in from the main and yeah snow's gonna have to turn around like this is just not gonna work i think his best course of action is to completely retreat and that's what he does doesn't really lose much okay he's gonna take the high ground here take this engagement force the, force the hydras to attack on the low ground but he loses so many zealots there loses six basically for nothing i was wondering is plus one done yet for jadung but it's not those Hydras just really packing a punch, even with plus zero. And I would say that 
Protoss still in a decent position, but I'm liking Jadong's position more and more now. We've got the first DT out, and the single DT is going to push back this attack. But we've got 40 drones for Jadong. He's got that six hatch production, obviously. He's got his lair. I think I saw that these overlords have speed on them. The Corsairs are finally going to get pushed back by the Scourge. And we've probably got Lurkers coming pretty soon. Also plus one kicking in, of course, for Jadong. So overall, this looks like a damn good position for him. He is still down 30 supply. And like I said, this high ground can be really punishing if Protoss can get to that position. So back in Snow's main, does he have range coming? The answer is yes. But he's not even going to wait for a range to complete. He's just going to go in here. He found an opening and... I actually like this angle of attack, but does he not have Storm? Does he not have Storm? He forgot the upgrade! And that means that this attack is really not going to get any damage done. I notice that he gets about two drones. Obviously, he got some Hydralisk here. He sneaks in a couple Zealots into the main, but this was not the move. 100% this was not the attack that he was looking for. He just lost 30 supply, whereas Zerg pretty much lost nothing. This was an amazing defense and very poor engagement for Snow. He is in big time trouble. We've got a lot of hiders out in the map. We've got lurkers being more... He, luckily, I would say he at least has a decent amount of Templars. Some of them have double storm available and we know that storm's about to complete. So at least he has a lot of firepower with the AOE. We also know range is about to kick in. We also know he's got like eight gates here. So he's going to still have a formidable army. But Zerg on three bases, fully running, not really a sizable zealot count anymore. Mid right third base is denied by just seven hydras. This is really not the position you want to be in as Snow. I like the overlord placement here, also spotting to see if there is a nexus taken. He sees that there isn't. And I was waiting to see if Jadon would take this fourth base at bottom middle, but it doesn't look like that's what he wants to take just yet. We've got a couple of lurkers on the high ground here. Goons, not going to pick them off just yet. But these two lurkers drew the enti entire army out of position. This looks like it's going to be a counterattack, but it's not big enough for it to be a counterattack. So, Snow, he does respond to it, but in the end, he just continues his push. Third base, again, going to be denied by these seven hiders, but like I said, Protoss on this high ground is very dangerous but i like that five lurkers are set up i gotta say i think jadong needs to get his hiders over here five lurkers are strong but can they fin this off okay there's a there's a, a, a group of hiders to push this back now we've got a almost 360 surround here like a 270 degree surround on this army but the the flanking hiders they end up backing off and protoss is going to push this back he is grouping up these hydras with these other hydras on the right side and actually this is not that big of an army from zerg so this could be a bleed off of about a group of hydras and that's not a great engagement for jadon i feel like he's kind of letting this slip at this point proto still at about 50 probes still about 50 drones for jadon but supplies have shot up immensely for snow he also knows that there's a lot of lurkers defending this position if he can swoop around over here it's likely that there's not a lot of lurkers in this spot and he's right they're also not even burrowed so okay i thought i think that could have been an opportunity for him but instead he's he takes the defensive route backs off gonna wait for a better engagement here wait for his storms to blanket the lurkers good storms on top of the hydras only three lurkers remaining remember these templar have a lot of energy they're hitting so many of the hydras Really good engagement there, but at the same time, we've got this impeccable defense from Protoss. Just a single DT, just a couple of Zelts are going to deny these Hydras from killing this base. Well, of course, as I say that the Hydras reign supreme, luckily the Protoss army coming back to help defend this, and he will end up defending this unless this Lurker can get off. And it does not complete. So this is going to be a cleanup here from Snow. Both slides, both sides trade a lot of supply for this though. Down to almost even 120 to 110. Zerg's upgrades at plus two. No plus one armor coming in. I don't see Queen's Nest anywhere. 
So Jnong still heavily committing to just this lair tech. Protoss still on just 8 gates. Oh man, he's mined out in his main, which means he's going to be mining out in his natural pretty soon. So he desperately needs to solidify this defense at mid right, make sure he can keep this third base, and think about taking a fourth base. Because we know Jadong, of course, being Zerg, has not mined out his main and natural just yet. He's also got a fourth base himself. Zerg, in fact, has taken work early. 53 drones for him, so really killer econ right now. But these high ground positions are really going to help Protoss defend this third base. Uh, if Zerk can sit up here, I think this would be really punishing. Also sitting outside of this bridge would be really punishing. That means that Zerk could take a fifth base here. Also have potential to cut off this base at any point. And remember, the upgrades of Protoss got stagnated for a long time. But actually he's done a really good job to catch up. He's got plus two weapon, plus one armor. He does have double forge. He's starting his plus two armor. Still no plus three weapon just yet. That's a big misstep right there. But not going to hurt him too much since Zerg only has plus zero armor. And we do have the fourth base coming in for Protoss. Still hovering at just around 48 probes. I think this is a fine amount. Since he is going to be basically on just two base mining, there's really no real reason to go into like 60 probes, for example. That would just be an overcommitment to probes. Just focus more on your army, and I think Protoss will be in a fine position. He does now have critically four gases too, and that means that Protoss is going to start being able to pump out all those massively gas-intensive units, like the Mass Goons, like the Billion Templars. He has five right now, a lot of them banking multiple storms. In Zerg's main, still don't see Queen's Nest anywhere, and I really am skeptical at this point what his fallback plan is. Looks like his fallback plan is this Muta Harassment. He kills all five of those Templars that were just there. Now Protoss is in real trouble. How do you actually fight a Zerg army if you have no AI AOE? Uh, this is going to be a real nightmare for him. He does have two more Templars at the bottom side. Uh, but that's not enough. Definitely not enough to face the Swarm of Zerg units, but we've got a DT drop into the main. Looks like this was spotted somehow by Overlords. Mutas come in, he's gonna clean this up easily. DTs get two drones, definitely not worth. And Snow, he is in big time trouble now. It looks like we're just gonna have Zerg trying to starve out Protoss. I don't really see any real move that Protoss can make. His army's big, but lack of AoE prevents him from actually attacking the high, oh no, you can't give up this position. If he loses this position, this completely isolates the main. Good storm there. Hits a decent amount of hydras. The lurkers really need to burrow. If if Jadong wants to make this attack, he's got to burrow now. The Mutas come in, snipe a couple of Templars. He's going to pick off all these Templars too. But it does at least keep Zerg at bay here. But this is really a dire situation now. Like It's going to be so hard to attack into these lurkers. Another great storm hits the majority of the hydras. But you can see... More Templars falling. The cannons are completely exposed. Protoss barely holding on here. He's got a decent amount of goons. A decent amount of zealots, but it really is just pure goon. And Hydra Lurker is just going to shred pure goon. The Hydra count is obviously immense too. What is it? Maybe like 50 Hydras or so. There's a group there. Second group. Two and a half groups. Another group up here. We're looking at about four to five groups of Hydra Lurker here. This is going to be so hard to stop. Snow having to rebuild cannons at a base he really does not want to have to be forced to build more cannons at. Zerg taking his fifth base. This looks like it's going to be an unstoppable army if Zerg can find the, the angle of attack. I don't think this is it. Attacking in the high ground, yeah, definitely not the angle he wants. I did notice that we've got a Templar here at bottom right. Triple Storm available for him. So that means that he's not going to be able to attack this position at all. I really think Jadong's best course of action here is to just keep attacking this spot. And that's exactly what we see. Well, at least not yet. I thought he was positioning like he's going to. And there we go. Lurkers moving into position again. Really wants to cut off this entire army at the bottom side. And here we go. Hydra's moving into uh, position here. A lot of cannons have been rebuilt, though. A lot of storm. I don't know. I don't know if this is actually enough for Zerg to make it through. But I, I still like the idea, though. Like, you know that a lot of the Protoss army is over here. Just cut it off. 
or cut off the reinforcements from the main. And it looks like that's what he's done. And instead, is going to go for the third base. All right, he got onto the high ground. That's the better angle. He's attacking from the left side, too. He's got these lurkers to cut off the reinforcements in the main. Huge line of hydras from the backside also moving into the third base again continuously attacking from both sides the storms are pretty decent he eliminates a lot of lurkers eliminates a lot of hydras on the top side but how do you answer this army the answer is you don't this third base is going to fall there's definitely not enough goons here to help support the cannons look at supplies they've plummeted for snow down below zerk supply it's almost impossible to come back from a scenario like this as protoss also, losing this third base is going to put Protoss on one base now. He has one base mining. Archon is going to fall. Hydra's just continuing to melt these goons. He eats a pretty big storm. But I don't think that's enough. More Hydra's. Bottom right denies the fifth base. Zerg. His plus one armor is done. Plus two should be coming for his armor. He's still just on Lair Tech. Apparently Hydra Lurker is all you need. I don't even think that was a cancel right there on that Nexus. That's just going to be straight up 400 minerals down the drain. And I think we are moments away from seeing a GG from Snow. Unless there's some type of miraculous hold from him at this third base. Or fourth base. It really feels like at this point this is Jadong's game to lose. We even have long distance mining from the probes. That's how desperate Protoss is at this point. You could say, like, well, maybe Protoss can start or should have taken this base. You know, maybe he can take this, but once this temple falls, how are you going to get onto this high ground, right, to help defend? Like, this barrier prevents units from coming in there, so I don't even think Snow could have really taken that base at any point. I think these two bases were the smartest bases that he could have taken, but in the end, the Jadong Macro really reigning supreme this game. And he, he's he got to be taking it any moment now. It's 150 supply to 83. Snow would need to have the greatest storms of all time to hold this attack. And we know that that's just not going to happen. A rebuild of those 11 mutilists coming in. He's got Templars on the menu. He's going to eat that one up. That one's gone. That one's gone. And out of five Templars, we get off just a single storm. And that's probably going to be all she wrote. We've got a DT counterattack to top left. This can be a way for Protoss to get back into the game if it was more even. But at this point, there's just really no answer here. This is probably going to be the final attack. Four goons, six zealots, one archon, and a dream versus Hydra Man coming from all sides. Archon falls, second Archon falls, goons fall, zealots fall. This is going to be the third base falling, and the GG it has got to be coming any moment now. There it is, Snow. He taps out, and that means that the Tyrant himself is going to take this game. So I really did like both players positioning and posturing this game. I think Snow did a good job to take his bases, but that real big attack that he made at mid-left versus, versus Jadon, where he forgot the storm, that really seemed to be the game-changing moment where Jadong just had insane production and there was really no great angle for Snow to attack from after that point. So well done from Jadong. He defended well, macroed well, and the Muta harassment really sealed the game for him. That's going to be it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back in the future with another cast from Key by StarCast TV.